Ooh, the segment addition postulate. The segment addition postulate says if I have a bunch of segments stuck together that you can add those segments up and it'll equal the whole thing. Hmm, so let's see what I know. I'm supposed to find IK. I'm supposed to find from here, let's go to pen, from here to here. Hmm, I know you're 12 but I don't know KL. <gasps> Ooh, but I do know that JK plus KL is 31, which means if I want to find KL here, I can do 31 minus 12. 31 minus 12 is 19. Okay, so let's get rid of that question mark. Now you might be thinking, uh, that's not going to help me because I need IK, not KL. I know, but I'm working towards something here. I'm working towards something here. What I also know is IL is the whole thing is 49. I know that J, K, and K, L add up to make 31. So if I wanted to find out what I, J was, I could do 49 minus 31, which is 18. In a way, it was kind of useless. <laughs> it was kind of pointless to find K, L, because eventually I didn't really need that. But, you know, I had fun doing it, so it's too late now. <laughs> Am I done? No. Because I have to find IK. Still haven't found that yet. Ah, but IJ is 18 and JK, just kidding, is 12. And IK is 18 plus 12. So IK is 30. Oh, 30. That's going to be my age in a few years. Hee hee hee. Just kidding. That ship has sailed a long, long, long time ago but I still sound great. <laughs> mm, like and subscribe. Points A, B, and C are collinear. That means they're all points that live on the same line. So let's draw a fake line just for funsies. B is in between A and C, another fake line with points now. Solve for x. All right, what do I know? I know ac is 22, so I know this whole thing. Oh my gosh, is 22. That looks great. 22, the Taylor Swift special. I know that bc is x plus 14. bc, of course, standing for before Christ. Uh, and ab is x plus 10. So what do I know? Well, according to the segment addition postulate, AB plus BC equals AC, which means AB X plus 10 plus BC, so I can put that in parentheses even though it's useless, plus X plus 14 is going to equal 22, the aforementioned Taylor Swift special. Now, these parentheses were useless. So let me rewrite it, getting rid of those parentheses. I put those parentheses there just because when you substitute, you technically should have parentheses. Meh, 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 meh. Sounding like a teacher. Let's combine the x's on the left. x and x make 2x. 10 and 14 make 24. And that equals 22. Now it's a two-step. Subtract 24 from both sides. So that leaves us with 2x equals negative 2. One last step, divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. Now you might be thinking, no, 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 you can't have a negative length. This isn't a negative length. This just gives us an x. So if I wanted to find what these lengths are, I could be like, well, this is going to be negative 1 plus 10, 9. And this is going to be negative 1 plus 14, 13. And 9 plus 13 is 22. So weird answer, especially for geometry when you want to stay away from negatives. But this is the answer, and I'm sticking to it. Find DE, which is this chunk right here. 
This uses the segment addition postulate, which says if I add you and add you and add you, I get this whole thing. So since I'm given information about each little segment here, let's just do that. Let's add them all up. DE is 3X minus 28 plus EF is 3X minus 30 plus FG, which is just X, and all of that equals 33. If you have nothing in front of a parentheses, you don't need the parentheses. So this leaves me with 3X minus 28 plus, again, nothing in front of a parentheses, 3X minus 30 plus X equals 33. Let's combine some like terms. We got 3x, we've got another 3x, and we've got 1x, so that's 7x. We've got negative 28 and negative 30, which is negative 58, and that equals 33. Now it's just a regular two step equation. Let's add 5, 8, <laughs> 58. I don't know why I said 5, 8, but I did, and I'm, I'm, I'm not changing anything. 7x is going to equal 91. Last step, since 7 is attached to x, let's detach it by dividing everything by 7. And 91 divided by 7 is 13. Now, before I circle that and be like, Dunzo, I'm not. It didn't ask me to find x. It asked me to find de. But the only way that I could find de is by finding x and now plugging it into that guy right there. So de is 3 times x, 3 times 13, minus 28. Running out of space. So 3 times 13 is 39. 30 minus, oh my gosh, 39 minus 28 is 11. So DE is 11. No units to worry about. No centimeters, no inches. Just 11, baby. We found it. Classify each angle as acute, like me, obtuse, right, like me, or straight, no comment. I have an acute angle, and acute angles mean they have to be less than 90 degrees. Not less than or equal to, less than 90. Obtuse has to be an angle that's going to be in between 90 and 180. Right is always 90 on the dot. Straight is 180 on the dot. So, 180, straight. When I draw an, a line that's 180 degrees, it's going to look like that. Okay. Now, 97 is going to be like a right angle, but just a teensy bit more. That's obtuse, because it's more than 90. 39, if I were to draw an angle... Uh, half of a right angle is 45, so if I just kind of keep it close, that's what 39 would kind of look like. I can get a protractor and do all this, but I'm not going to. All I have to do is just say that it's acute because it's less than 90. You're greater than 90, smaller than 180, so you're obtuse. You're clearly less than 90, so you're acute. And those are my five guys, like the burger place. Name the angle in four ways. Okay, when you name an angle, you have to figure out what your vertex is first. Your vertex is where the two rays that create your angle meet. One of your angle names can be the angle F. Okay, just F. As long as you use your vertex, you're not allowed to say angle G, you're not allowed to say angle E, but you are allowed to say angle F. Since it gives us that number here, I'm allowed to call it angle 4. Now, there's two other ways that you can name it. 
we include points G and E along with this. So one way that you could also name this is write this out as G F E. If you use three letters, you must always have your vertex in the middle of those three letters. And if you're thinking, well, why did you start out with G? Couldn't we start out with E? Yup, as long as you put F in the middle, it doesn't really matter. So all four of these are ways that you can name this angle right here. What's key is noticing that your vertex is F. Everything is pretty much based off around it. We also had a number that works too. This means the measure of angle IHQ. So find the measure of angle IHQ if the measure of IHG is 176 degrees and the measure of QHG is 130 degrees. This is going to use what's called the angle addition postulate. The angle addition postulate says if I have two angles like this one right here and this one right here, glued together, I can add them up and equal that whole thing right there. What I know is IHQ, IHQ is, uh, I don't know actually, that's what I needed to find. <laughs> so we'll call you X. IHG, let's use a different color. IHG is this whole thing. So IHG is 176 degrees. QHG, QHG, this guy right here is 130. So X plus 130 is 176. X plus 130 is 176. Why? Because the two smaller angles add up to make this big green angle here. All I have to do for this guy is subtract 130 degrees from both sides, and X is going to equal 46, my current age. Now, I'm not going to call it X. I just used X as a variable. So what I'm going to do is go back to the original thing that it asked me to find. The measure of angle IHQ is 46 degrees. Okay? Angle addition postulate with really basic numbers, nothing crazy, no wacky problems. You could solve this without using an X. You could solve this using common sense just by saying, uh, isn't it just 176 minus 130? Yep. But I got a little bit more involved because more time doing these problems means more YouTube money for me. And I'm all about lining those pockets, baby. That's why I keep talking at the end of these videos sometimes. Maybe those precious extra seconds will help feed my family. Also, I'm not 46. I'm a little younger than that. <laughs> a little. Like and subscribe. The measure of angle GFN equals 4X plus 10. The measure of angle NFE, not to be confused with NFTs, is 14X plus 3. The measure of angle GFE is 157. Find the measure of angle NFE. All right, let's label some stuff. GFN, GFN, GFN is 4x plus 10. So let's sneak that in there. Okay. Uh, NFE, thank goodness, is going to be 14x plus 3. GFE, GFE, this whole thing is 157 degrees. Which means I can set up an equation that says 4x plus 10, 4x plus 10, plus 14x plus 3 equals 157. 
Why did I put those parentheses there? Just because you should always put parentheses when you substitute, even though in geometry, more often than not, you don't need them. But one of these days it might be needed, so the parentheses are there. Although since there's nothing in front of the parentheses or just a plus sign in front of the parentheses, we don't need them. So I'm getting rid of them, okay? So now we have ourselves a pretty gross looking equation, but I do have stuff on the left like 4x, like 14x that combine to make 18x. I have 10 and 3, which I think is 13, and that equals 157 still. Now it's a two-stepper. In order to get x all by itself, we have to get rid of 18, but let's get rid of 13 first by subtracting 13 from both sides, like so. 18x equals 144. Divide both sides by 18. And that's going to end up being 8. Of course, I did that off my head, and I didn't pause the video so I could ask Siri to do it for me. X is 8. Are we done? No. It's not asking me to find X. It's asking me to find NFE. NFE is 14x plus 3. So the measure of angle NFE is going to be 14 times x, which is now 8, plus 3. 14 times 8 is, of course, 112. Again, I didn't ask Siri and pause the video. I just did it in my head. 112 plus 3 means the measure of angle NFE. I keep wanting to write NFL, but I didn't. It's 115. By the way, the NFL does not sponsor any of my math videos, but if they're interested... Just let me know, NFL. Let me know, Goodell. I'm a big Eagles fan. So just give me a call. Find X. What do we have here? We have a picture where I have two angles that are across from each other. Oh, these are called vertical angles. When two angles are created by you either crossing over like so, Angles that are opposite of each other are called vertical angles, and vertical angles equal each other. So, in this case, 2 plus 3x is going to equal 62 because these guys are vertical angles. Okay, uh, so let's get rid of the parentheses. Let's add some color and get rid of the parentheses. Don't need the parentheses. I just put them there because they were over here. I have to get x all by itself. 3 is attached to x, but let's get rid of 2 because it's floating. Cross you out. 3x is equal to 60 now. Now it's a one step. In order to get rid of 3, we have to divide 3 from both sides, like so, and x is going to equal 20. And that's all we had to do. Just find x. It's not really necessary to put a parenthesis or a, a degree symbol there just because X represents a variable and not a measurement. But, you know, if you did, I don't think your teacher would mark you wrong. I certainly wouldn't. You might have a mean teacher that would, but X is 20. Ooh, speaking of uh, 20, that's, that's how many years old I was a few years ago. <laughs> ah. Find X where this angle right here is 29, this angle right here is x minus 24, and this huge angle is 296. Now, do these guys add up to make 90? No. Do these guys add up to make a straight angle? No, so not 180. Uh, do these guys equal each other? No, I don't think so. It doesn't look like they do. What do we know? Well, they had to give us that 296 for some special reason, and that's because the only way we're going to do this is the fact that an entire circle, an entire angle spun around beginning to end is going to be 360 degrees. So my job is to find X, where I know that this angle is X minus 24. 
I know that this angle is 29, so we'll add 29. The rest of a circle is going to be 296, and that whole thing is going to equal 360 degrees. So that'll help us find our x. So let's get rid of the parentheses, don't need them. x minus 24 plus 29 plus 296 equals 360. Negative 24 and 29 make 5. So plus 296 comes along for the ride, 360 comes along for the ride. These guys combine to make 301. So 360 is still living there. I now have a one-step equation where all I have to do is subtract 301, subtract 304, and x equals 59. 59. So there you have it. That is the angle addition postulate in action. Fun.